Drop it. All right, what is going on everybody? My name is Flexi and today I've got another video for you. So a couple days ago, I introduced you to my deck list for, uh, of the Drake Slayers with the Super Heavy Samurais. And today I thought instead of just showing you empty test hands without interruptions and stuff like that, I could also just present to you how the deck performs in an actual game, going first, going second, playing through interruptions, all that good stuff. Um, I played against Trap Tricks my first match, but I forgot to save the replays. I won 2-1 though. Uh, <laughs> to be fair, I would have 2 0 them if I hadn't messed up the combo. Um, was really a quick and one-sided match and then I played against the Chimera Fusion stuff and against the Labyrinth um, Dynamorphia which was fun um, but yeah let's just uh, hop into the replays real quick so the first one against Chimera Fusion um, I'm just gonna let him play in the background I don't know what most of those cards do I just know they search a lot and like Chimera Fusion summons the monsters and stuff uh, I on the other hand have basically no plays at all uh, it really depends on what I open or what I top deck for turn uh, Fender is really good, uh, Revolution is really good, Astro is really good, but I don't have a combo starter. Um, they discard also one card in the end phase, they discarded my um, Dynamite, which I'm really happy about. Like, I This is actually the best card you could have discarded, I really didn't care about this one. And the fact that I top deck Majesty actually allowed me to win this game, um, spoiler. Uh, because Luster searches the, uh, sorry, Revolution searches Luster and then Luster and Majesty are full combo. Uh, I also have a low scale so I can play, uh, I can pop Majesty with its own effect, stuff like that. Uh, with Fenrir and Astrograph. So the fact about Fenrir, actually fun fact here, is that the monsters on the field here don't really do anything. So banishing any one of them wouldn't have even like, like uh, impacted them all too much. Uh, also the monster that I targeted, they fused away for the Chimera, but uh, Chimera, I'm not sure if that was a mistake by my opponent, but uh, for Chimera to resolve, both parts of the effect have to resolve, so the draw and the pop effect. And the fact that he used two monsters from the field probably to dodge my Fenrir, I guess. Um, or maybe he didn't have enough monsters in hand or whatever. Uh, he had to use two monsters, but because I only controlled one card on the field, he couldn't pop two, so he couldn't even draw one. So his Chimera was just is just a vanilla, basically. Um, yeah, that is, that is the current game state. I think he has one more negate in the graveyard, and apparently his hand is dead. So, uh, yeah, I'm just searching Luster, Majesty Luster popping off, there's not much to say here really. I'm just gonna show this uh, gameplay off real quick, uh, so you can see the, the combo in action again. But that's basically everything I had to face, a Chimera that didn't do anything. Um, yeah, this is the one negate. So, oh, okay, 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 now I remember. I tried recording this video a couple minutes ago already, but I uh, had to uh, restart the recording. And I forgot why I Pendulum summoned the Majesty here. Now I remember why. Um, it's because the uh, Ignister effect has been negated. And the fact that Ignister is our first, like, basically our beyond, and the entire combo depends on Ignister resolving, is really heavy. But at the same time, it didn't really matter because I wasn't facing any interruptions after this and apparently uh, I don't need beyond and like pendulum summon more than one monster if the opponent doesn't have any interruptions as you're going to see in a second because I pendulum summoned the majesty uh, gained access to the field spell I didn't have beyond I only pendulum summoned one monster uh, but I still could make cross sheep and revolution astro uh, to be fair my hand was absolutely correct uh, astro adding another another revolution absolutely broken uh, cross sheep then also reviving monsters uh, this deck feels really toolboxy, even though it's just one singular combo line um, using the the code breakers and stuff. But still, like cross sheep being able to revive, um, code breakers being able to uh, be made under any one of those. Apollosa protecting us. Um, actually, yeah, he has two negate from the graveyard, and Apollosa protecting me right here from one of them because I was going to, going to bounce with the firewall, and then I revived the uh, the Ignister and attack for a game. So that was game one, uh, quick and dirty. And then game two, as you can see, there's no game three, so I won the second game as well. Um, there's not much to say here, except that I don't know what really to Ash. I, I don't think there's a good Ash target in Chimera, I guess, because the fusion only sends from hand or field, so it's not a branded fusion-like effect. Um, I just Ashed the first search because I thought maybe that's like, um, they they needed to get the play started and then I, they can't do anything at all. That certainly wasn't the case. Uh, in this case, it's kind of funny because he also discarded one in end phase, but I opened two Joker and Wakaoshi and bike. So even if the, he had discarded the Wakaoshi, I would have had the bike and like if he discarded the Joker, but I had another one. So and Wakaoshi Joker is the 
best two card combo by far in the entire deck. So I like if, if he doesn't have a draw or like even a draw, I, I think I could have played through draw no problem. I still could have even if there was going first. Um, Joker bike I think set still sets up like eight interruptions on draw, um, even under nips. Like there's. There's not much he can do here. He really needs like three hand traps plus his graveyard negates or whatever to, to actually beat me in this game. Um, that's how full of gas this deck is. Uh, now I'm very lucky that he uh, apparently didn't use any interruptions on this one because this would have cost me. But uh, yeah, I, I just hope that once I go to the YCS or locals that my opponents don't figure out that this is actually my uh, biggest choke point in the entire game. And yeah, the rest of this should probably be familiar to you. Uh, the guy is re uh, revive the synchro, make a link three, uh, code breaker combo, and yeah, that's uh, just the same. I think he even surrenders uh, once I summon the code breakers. Oh yeah, I summon the firewall and he just surrenders. There's nothing uh, he could have done here. So yeah, that's uh, basically everything about the match. There's not much to say here. Uh, doesn't seem like it was the branded Chimera variant. Maybe that one's a little better. I constantly see it in top cups, top cuts in these YCSs recently. Um, maybe that's why it was so clean, or maybe he just opened badly twice in a row, or whatever. Um, but yeah, that was uh, fun. And then to something less fun, <laughs> playing against the Labyrinth Dinomorphia. Um, yeah, there's. Uh, I, I can't go into more detail as to what exactly they're doing. I know they set an Eradicator, which against most decks would have been insane, but in this case we're playing Pendulums, so most of our spells are actually monsters. And then the one triple tag I can live without for sure. If it wasn't for the other part of the deck, which was Dynamorphia. Dynamorphia, in case you didn't know, sets up a skill drain on legs, um, and those legs are pretty strong. The uh, Kent Regina and Rex Term are going uh, doing leg day four times a week. I couldn't beat over them. I couldn't do anything against them. This is the only problem when playing super monster heavy decks. That's why usually you want both spells and monsters ideally. In this case, it wouldn't have mattered because the Eradicator would have taken care of the other half. So uh, that was just. Uh, I want to call it an FTK. I, I have been FTK. Um, yeah, I. I I actually just waited for another turn. I was thinking, okay, maybe I can top deck a um, Book of Eclipse and then flip the monsters. Except I was under er Eradicator. So uh, that was game one. Game two, I actually won and I chose to go second. I sided in Denko and Cyclone. And I was hoping that maybe that would help me push through their shit. But uh, I didn't even open any of it. But I still pushed through because apparently. Uh, they opened one of the bricks uh, which they needed to send from deck off of the um, the Dynamorphia fusion trap card, and so and uh, they also didn't manage to set up the the Eradicator or any other floodgates, and that was probably because they didn't open like Stodi or whatever. I didn't I didn't really know how the deck works. Um, I just know that they ended on three monsters and two trap cards. One of them was the fusion. The other one I don't know because I spun it with uh, Ignister effect, and then it doesn't get flip face up obviously. But um, yeah, uh, my uh, opening hand, bike searching Wakaoshi. Wait, did it not? Oh no, he discarded the bike with um, something. Uh, right, so I didn't have access to the uh, super heavy combo and I still opened the brick here, but I had access to Joker searching Revolution and the other Revolution searching Luster and Majesty as well. So this is full Drake Slayer combo as per the old days. So, and the old days I say. Um, yeah, I kind of messed this up here. I actually didn't want to do that if I remember correctly, but I still did it. And then I had to play a kind of awkward line, but I, it still worked. And I'm really happy that he didn't have like an effect mailer or whatever. Uh, yeah, there I, I spawned the trap, so I didn't know what it was. Summon the Majesty Search Field spell. I did have a low scale, which I, I kind of actually don't mind opening Benke. He's pretty cool. And yeah, from then on, I. You've seen this combo in my last video. If you haven't, then you better check it out. Um, you've seen the combo in these past couple games as well, um, at least part way through. And yeah, I just pop off again, revive monsters, astrograph, search another uh, revolution. Actually, no, I had to search a majesty because I already used three revolutions. And now just court breaker combo, firewall. Um, I think I. Yeah, I popped this with the code breaker, which is actually crazy. And I don't know if people know this or like if they have it on, in their mind. Um, but the Cold Breaker Link 3 actually pops um, spell and trap cards up to the number of linked 
code breaker monsters on the field or that you control or whatever. So in this case, basically it's three um, spell and trap removals uh, just in the middle of your combo, which is crazy. I didn't know if that comes up at all um, because like at, by that point they're gonna have to uh, re like activate some of the trap cards already, right? Um, well, maybe it can come in clutch. In this case, it, I want to say it did, but it didn't really because the frenzy was probably dead. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get into that real quick. Summon from deck. I made the firewall already, and at this point, I was I like I still could have popped off. I still could have linked into firewall into Zelantis and make Appaloosa make like you know it's I I could have popped off even more. I still had a revolution in hand as well, um, but I I thought why not just make it quick and th this is more than enough. I I still have like two bounces I think or three I, yeah three bounces even. Um, I still had a shuffle, so I could have activated either one of those two and uh, removed it to shuffle one of those. Uh, so yeah, there was definitely no way my opponent won this. And yeah, winning going second is crazy against these trap decks, but apparently they just break way too hard. But then we get into the game three, and the first thing you can see here is my hand was absolutely abysmal. Double Cyclone, sure, I guess, cool. Eclipse, it wouldn't have done anything, probably. Um, I don't think they would have cared, but the other problem is, and here's my sixth card, is a Danko Seca. They also wouldn't have cared because the entire game uh, took place in the draw phase. Uh, Luster and Big Banke were my only Pendulum monster, so there was no play I was gonna play. Uh, there was no way I was gonna play the game anyway. And yeah, uh, that was game three basically, right? Plus they set up a D barrier, and then when I saw that, I just scooped anyway because not only could I ha not have done anything here, and they would have probably OTK'd me next turn, I. Uh, I'm not playing through D barrier. I'm not. I'm just. I'm not playing through D barrier. I'm not. So yeah, uh, those were two matches I played today on Omega. Um, overall, I was having lots of fun with the deck, and um, I can now see why some people actually prefer to play full gas uh, over like hand traps and stuff. Because sure, Fenrir is cool. I really like Fenrir. A uh, book of Eclipse can come in clutch super like super hard, but. Having six like full-on turbo pendulum cards that can summon themselves even after you get interrupted and stuff uh, is definitely a big benefit to have and I'm actually not entirely sure whether I want to give it a try yet but um, like those hands that I had with like full drag flare combo plus super heavy engine plus maybe an extended like an astrograph or whatever uh, they've kind of convinced me that I can play through quite a few interruptions if I do that. Oh just a quick addendum to the video which I forgot to record in the actual recording uh, is that I slightly changed the list and what I did was I took out I think Droll and yeah I, I took out Droll and the Omni Negate engine with a Vortex to put in Book of Eclipse and Talents. Um, Droll I took out because I've been convinced that it's not exactly the best um, like blowout hand trap in the format right now uh, whereas I've been convinced that Book of Eclipse is kind of the best blowout card in the entire format right now so uh, I swapped out Droll for Eclipse and then I I had, oh yeah, right. I had to take out the, or I had to take out one card. I felt like for a dweller because I feel like it's really going to help me against Unchained, and so um, I didn't like I I didn't need the three like one offs for the Vortex Engine anymore, and I had three spaces left. Ash, I could have played Ash. Um, I just didn't feel like it would be impactful enough. So maybe playing uh, Talents to potentially draw into another hand trap or to draw into a combo starter or whatever is cool. Um, or uh, ripping a card from the opponent, like a board breaker or a combo starter from the opponent's hand. Uh, this is what I'm currently going with, and the extra X stayed basically the same, except for the fact that I took out Vortex for the Dweller. Um, and Baguska, well, it hasn't done much for me by so far, but I still think he's a good backup plan, and if, if I don't play him, I'm gonna play a second copy of Ignister though. And then in the side, I play Ash for specific matchups, like for example, big la like for the big welcome in Labyrinth or for the brand diffusion and stuff. Uh, Droll, I do think is still a good side deck card, especially at my locals where many people play stuff like Code Talkers and um, you know just decks in general that search like 15 times. So Droll is definitely a good side deck card for me. Nibiru also, and then Denko, Sekka, and Cosmic Cyclone are just generic back row hate. I yeah, I'm not entirely sold on it. I'm also considering not focusing on back row decks at all because. As you could have seen uh, in the in the Labyrinth match, Cyclones are not going to do anything, Denkos are not going to do anything, so um, I could just go full send against monster decks and if I have to face a trap deck then so be it, I'm going to lose it or maybe I can push through if they break or whatever. Um, it's really just going to come down to luck and I'm most likely going to be the unlucky one in the scenario, but uh, yeah, just showing you the update real quick. So yeah, 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the duels. Maybe you've learned something as well. Maybe this has convinced you to play the deck or at least give it a shot. Um, either way, let me know in the comments what you guys think about the video. If you liked it, then leave a thumbs up. If you want to see more content, because there's definitely more content to come in the future, then subscribe to the channel. And other than that, guys, see you next time.